here is a verse in Srimad Bhagavatam by <coughs> spoken by uh, Shona Rishi, a great sage of the name Shona. <coughs> There was a great meeting in Naimisharana, a place, a very sacred place in India. Uh, if you sometimes go to India, you'll try to find out this place. It is in northern India, and there is a big city, a very well-known city, Lucknow, and it is about 40 or 50 miles from Lucknow. But the place is so nice, so attractive, <coughs> that any man who goes there will find immediately, spiritually, uh, impact. It is so nice place. Namishara. So it is very old place, formerly when sages uh, used to hold their meeting, uh, they generally held their meeting in that place, namely Shavan. So this Srimad Bhagavatam was also discussed first in that Naimishar, not first, for the second time. First it was explained by Shukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Parikhit. Maharaj Parikhit <coughs> was cursed by a Brahmin boy to die within a week. Uh, <coughs> Formerly, even a, a, a small child, this boy, this Brahmin boy was playing with his uh, playmates. That means he was a child, not more than 10 to 12 years old. And he was informed that Maharaj Purikhet has insulted your father by garlanding him with a dead snake. The fact was that Maharaj Parikhe was <coughs> in hunting. One after another so many things come, but let me explain to you. This hunting business was allowed only for the kings, Kshatriyas not for ordinary man. Killing uh, in sports because the king had to administer so strongly that sometimes he had to kill a, a, an evil person immediately with sword. The kingdom was very strong. Not many days before, say about hundred years ago, in Kashmir, if a, a thief was caught, burglar was caught, and he was proved that he has committed theft, the king would personally cut off, chop off his hand. The punishment was so severe. And the result was, that even you miss something on your way, nobody will touch it. Everyone is afraid. Let the things remain there. One who has lost his thing, he will come and take it. We don't require to take it. So the kings were very severe to punish uh, unwanted uh, social elements. So uh, the kings were therefore allowed 
sometimes to hunt in the jungle, to practice killing. Just like doctors are pra- allowed to practice a surgical operation on dead body, otherwise how they will practice, how they will become surgeon if they do not practice. Similarly, only the kings were allowed to kill some animal uh, in the jungle sometimes. So this Parikit Maharaj was hunting. <coughs> and when he became tired and thirsty, he entered uh, in the hermitage home of his sage, because in those days in the jungles there are many hermitages. Uh, those who wanted to live secluded life in the jungle, in the forest, they would have their home, very a small cottage, and their means of living was milk and fruit. They would get fruits from the trees, and the kings would sometimes contribute some cows. So that was sufficient for them to have some milk from the cow and get the fruits from the trees in the jungle. That was sufficient. Uh, that is sufficient still anywhere, any part of the world you can live without any economic problem. Provided, there is no question of provided, anywhere you can keep a cow, there is no expenditure. The cow will go out and eat some vegetables and grass, so you haven't got to spend anything for the cow. And when she returns, she gives you milk, nice milk. We are trying to introduce this system in our new Vrindavan scheme. We are keeping their cows, and that place is in New Virginia, Mounts Villa. Uh, it is uh, about three miles away from any city or any citizen approach, but they are living very nicely depending on some vegetables, fruits, and cow's milk. So, uh, actually, a man can live very peacefully and healthy life. Not only peacefully, you know, if you are healthy, if your mind is equilibrium, then naturally you are peaceful. So that was a system for the sages and hermitages, uh, hermits, that uh, they used to live on cow's milk and uh, fruits. So this king being tired, being thirsty, entered the home of a sage and he was in meditation. So the the king called him because he was king. So he he is habituated to order. A king is not supposed to submit. Although they submitted to to great sages and brahmins, but generally their spirit is ordering, commanding spirit. So he commanded, give me a glass of water, I am very thirsty. So that sage who was in meditation could not hear him. The king became a little angry that I am your guest, I am king, I am asking you water, water, and you are not hearing me, you are in your meditation. So he became a little disgusted, and there was a dead snake. So, uh, he took that dead snake and got it round about the neck of the sage. 
and went away in disgust that this sage did not offer me even a glass of water. Because if, according to Vedic system, if somebody comes in your home, even if he is enemy, it is the nyansan of the Vedas. Griham satrum api praptam vishastam akutu bhayam. When a person comes at your home, never mind, even if he is enemy, friend is welcome, that's all right. But even an enemy comes, oh, they are not forbidden. Not that in the gate there is a oh, beer of dog, no trespass allowed. No. There was no restriction. Even the enemy was admitted. Come on. So, griham satrum api praktam vishyasam makutu vayam. Even an enemy enters your house, you will, you will receive him in such a friendly way that he will forget that you are his enemy. That was the system. So because Maharaj Parikhit was king, he saw that there is negligence of this disciplinary action. I became, I was king, and I was thirsty, I became his guest. I came, Atithi, this guest is called Atithi. Atithi means there are some guests who give notice before, prior to coming there, and some guests come without any notice. So the guest who comes without any notice, he is called Atithi. So according to Hindu custom, the householder is to keep always some foodstuff for Atithi guest. Somebody may come uh, without notice, so some foodstuff is already in the store. That is called Atithi food. And the uh, Grihastha, <clears throat> the householder, is order that before eating, uh, a householder has to see in the members of the family, first the children must be fed, then diseased person must be fed, then elderly, old person must be fed. In this way, when everything is finished, then the proprietor of the household he will take his meals, and before taking his meals, he will stand outdoor and call loudly. If somebody is hungry, please come. Still there is food here. Yeah. And if there is no response, then he will take food. This is the system of Vedic civilization. <clears throat> so when Maharaj Parikhit saw that this sage, although he is sage, he is there to be an ideal man. He did not hear me. Uh, I am thirsty. I asked him water. And the injunction is, when you receive somebody, even if you are a very poor man, you should offer the guest a comfortable seat and a glass of water. Uh, that is not expensive. Uh, you can offer anyone a seat, please come and sit down here and take a glass of water. And if you can provide, you can give him nice food stuff. But even if you have got nothing at your home, <coughs> this thing you can offer without any expenditure, without any botheration. To receive him, please come on, come here, sit down, take a glass of water. That is the system. It's still. In Indian villages, just like we are sannyasi, renowned starter, uh, there is no problem. You sit down underneath a tree and so many residents will come. 
my dear oh, sannyasi, uh, will you please come and take prasadam? Oh. So many people invite. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is traveling alone, oh, wherever he goes, he was invited. That system is still there. A sannyasi is never hungry. So many people will provide him. And it is the injunction of the Shastra that a sannyasi, a brahmachari, are uh, sons of the society. As you take care of your children at home, similarly, you are also required to take care of the sannyasi and the brahmachari. Because their life is dedicated for the social welfare or without any charge. Uh, this our Krishna Consciousness Society is giving the most valuable thing, uh, chanting of Hare Krishna uh, without any charge, uh, without any, that canvassing, please take it, you will be happy, please take it. So people should know how much valuable service they are rendering. How much valuable. Samsara dhavan alalila loka. This world is just like blazing fire. People realize it. And when they, have, they do not find any solution, they become frustrated. They become confused. They take to intoxication to forget the blazing condition of life. So actually everyone in this material world is burning in the blazing fire of material consciousness. That's a fact. Somebody is trying to solve <coughs> by forgetting it, Oh, through the influence of intoxication and something else, artificially, that is not the solution. The real solution is to come to the original consciousness, that is Krishna consciousness. Actually, what is the real fact of our existence? real fact of our existence is this consciousness. Either an animal or a man or a superman or an aquatic or a tree or a plant, any living entity. What is the ultimate stand? The ultimate stand is consciousness. The animal body is animal body so long there is consciousness. The human body is human body so long there is consciousness. That's when the Bhagavad Gita you will find this verse. Avinasi tu tadviddhi jena sarva midam tatam. Abhinasitu Tadviddhi. Just try to understand. Just try to understand that thing. What is that? Just try to understand that thing as imperishable. What is that thing? Jena Sarvamidam Tatam. That thing which is pervading all over your body. And what is that thing? There is consciousness. Uh, so long there is consciousness, you feel either from this part of this body or this part of the body or this part of the anywhere you pinch. Because the consciousness is there, you feel, oh, it is painful. Or it is pleasant. There are two kinds of feelings painful or pleasure. And that is due to consciousness. 
And this consciousness is there in everybody, but there in degrees. That is, consciousness in tree is very low. Therefore, if you cut a tree, it does not respond. It responds according to modern science. Sar Jagadishtha the Bosch, uh, he has invented a machine that when you cut a tree or take out the fruit or the leaves or the branches, he feels. And that feeling is recorded in a machine. I do not know the exactly the machine name, but there is a machine immediately. So the consciousness is there in the trees also. But that has been uh, known by the scientific apparatus. But according to our Vedic injunction, that is already mentioned in the sastras that the trees have consciousness. They are also living entities. Uh, don't say that they are without life, they have got life. Uh, and therefore the system is just like we pick up flowers from the trees for offering to Krishna. But the injunction is that after evening you should not touch the tree. The idea is that they, they are sleeping, don't disturb. So the consciousness of the trees are admitted in the Vedic literature. Similarly, the consciousness is developed uh, from tree to worms, uh, microbes, worms, germs. Their consciousness is little more higher. Uh, then birds, their consciousness is little more higher. Then bees, their consciousness is little more higher. This is development, gradual process of evolution. Gradual process of evolution means gradual process of uh, developing the status, the state of consciousness. In this way, uh, the consciousness in human form of body is further developed, very nicely developed. And similarly, there are other elevated living condition in higher planets. They are called demigods. They are far advanced, uh, very uh, more and more intelligent. Their standard of living, their everything is far, far above than all these planets. Thousands and thousands of times. Just like we can discriminate here, even on this planet, uh, your standard of living, from materialistic point of view, just like to get a motor car in this country is ordinary thing. But in our country, in India, if somebody has got a motor car, he is considered to be very rich man. Yeah, even a worker goes on motor car, but in India, only a person who is very rich, he can have a motor car. As there is difference of standard of living from one country to another, similarly, there is difference of standard of living, standard of duration of life, standard of intelligence, standard of developed consciousness, everything different. That is stated in the Brahma Sanghita. Oh. Yasa Prabha Prabhavatu Jagadanda Koti Koti Sasesa Vasudhadi Vibhuti Vinnam. If you try to read Vedic literature, not very many, try to understand Bhagavad Gita as it is. Try to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. These two books will give you sufficient knowledge and we should take advantage of it. 
because our consciousness is developed, we should not waste our time simply reading these all nonsense literatures, uh, sex literatures. Simply waste it. Tadvāsa-tīrsam, uh, to read nonsense ordinary literature and books or newspaper is compared just like the uh, pleasure place of the crows. Uh, the crows, they are very much attached to the rejected, refused garbage. In your country I don't see many crows, but in our country uh, there are many crows. And the garbage section is pleasure, pleasure in place there, well, reject things. They take pleasure in that. But the swans, the ducks, they take pleasure in clear lake with lily flower, nice garden and nice birds and sharping. They take pleasure in that place. Similarly, there are classes of men also like crows and the like swans. The swans, they will take pleasure in this kind of literature, Vedic literature. And the crows like men, they will hunt after the rejected garbage-like things. Pula punachar vitachar varana. What is there in the sex literature? There is no new information. The same sex life, that's all. Sometimes half naked, sometimes naked, sometimes this, sometimes that. Uh, but the central place is sex. So, when you have got developed consciousness, try to understand Krishna. That is Krishna consciousness. Don't waste your time in nonsense literature. Don't waste. The life is very valuable. Oh. Don't think that because we have got human form of life, we shall live for one hundred years or sixty or seventy years. So let us enjoy. Bhagavad says this kind of enjoyment is there everywhere in animal life, in plant life. This enjoyment means sex pleasure. <clears throat> Vishaya khalu sarvata shyam. Vishaya. Vishaya means eating, sleeping, mating and defending. This is called Vishaya. Oh. One who is very much fond of these principles of life only, just like animals. They have no other problem. They do not know what Krishna consciousness, what philosophy, what is uh, metaphysical understanding. They have no such problem. Their only problem is uh, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. That's all. So this human form of life is not like that. Therefore the Saunak Rishi says, that āyur harati vai puṁsāṁ uddhan astanta janna so tassarte jat chano nita uttama sloko bhārtaya. He says that our duration of life is being taken away by the sun, beginning from its rising up to the end of setting. We are daily uh, losing the duration of our life. Just like this morning, today is 12th uh, July, the sun rises at 5.30 in the morning, and now it is uh, 5.30 again in the evening. These 12 hours have been taken away from the duration of our life. It's not a fact. He'll never get it back. If you ask any scientist that I'll give you 
12 millions of dollars. Please give me back these 12 hours again. No, it is not possible. No scientist can give. That is not. Therefore, Bhagavad says that from the beginning of the sunrise up to the end of sunset, your duration of life is being taken away. That's, that is the business. Kala. This is called time. Uh, past, present and future. Uh, what is present? Tom- yester- tomorrow it will be past. And again future. The past, present, future, past, present, future. But what is this past, present and future? This is past, present and future of this body. I am so far, I am concerned. I am not past, present. I do not belong to the category of the past, present and future. I belong to the category of eternity. Therefore we should be careful how to attain how to be elevated to the platform of eternity. That is our business. The developed consciousness of human beings should be utilized, not in the animal propensities of eating, sleeping, mating and defending, but we should search out the path or the way or the venue which will help us to get that life of eternity. So here it is said that tasyate jat khano nita uttama sloko bhārpaya. The sun is taking away our duration of life every minute, every hour, every day. But if we engage ourselves, in the topics of uttama sloka, that time he cannot take us. The idea is that the time which you are devoting here in this Krishna consciousness temple, this time the sun cannot take us. This is becoming your asset. Plus, it is not minus. The duration of life, so far your body is concerned, that may be taken away. That will be taken away. However, I may try to keep it intact. Nobody can keep it. It will be taken away. But the spiritual education which we are receiving in this class, oh, either the son or son's father, his father, nobody can take it away. It becomes a solid asset. Therefore, we should utilize our consciousness. How to make it a solid asset? And that is Krishna consciousness. That is Krishna consciousness. If you chant twenty-four hours, uh, very easy thing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. That means this time cannot be taken away by the sun. Just like he is taken away uh, the time of uh, pertaining to my body. Just like I was also a young man sometimes, say fifty years uh, ago, or say some years ago, but that is taken out. Now that cannot be returned. But the spiritual knowledge which I received from my spiritual master, that cannot be taken. That cannot be taken away. It will go with me. Even after this body, it will go with me. And if it is perfect in this life, then it will take me to the eternal abode. Jadgatyana nivartante tadhyama paramangam. This dham, 
everywhere, either this material world or the spiritual world, that belongs to Krishna or God. Uh, we are not proprietor of anything. But in this material world, this is although it is a property, it is the property of the Supreme Lord. Ishava samidam sadbam. Everything belongs to God. Just like everything belongs to government, either in the prison house or outside the prison house. Similarly, this material world is just like prison house, condition, life. Just like in the prison house, you cannot change your cell from this cell to another cell. Just like in free life, you can go from this home to that home. In prison life, you cannot do that. You must stay at your cell. So all these planets are like cells. We are trying to go to the moon planet. That is not possible. Not in this way. That way is different. I have explained many times in this meeting. Because we are given a particular cell, uh, either we are Americans or Indians or Chinese or Russian, we have been given this planet. Leave. You cannot leave it by your will. Although there are millions and billions of planets, and although you have got machine to fly, but because we are conditioned, checked by the laws of nature of God, you cannot go. Exactly like the man who is put into certain cell, he cannot change at his will without the superior author. So uh, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that don't try to change this cell from this cell to that cell. That will not make you happy. If you think, if a prisoner thinks that I am in this cell, let me request the superintendent of the jail to change my cell and I will be happy. That is a mistaken idea. One cannot be happy so long he is under the prison walls. One should become free. That should be the aim of all. So we are trying to be happy by changing the self, by this ism to that ism, by capitalism to communism, from communism to this ism, that that ism, that will not make us happy. You will have to completely change from this ism, this materialism, that's all. Then you will be happy. That is our problem, Krishna Kansa. We are not childishism. Uh, we are taking advice from the Supreme Person. Avrama uh, Bhavana Lokan Punaravartin Arjuna. My dear Arjuna, even if you are elevated to the highest planetary system which is called Brahma Loka, that is also desirable because the life is very, very long there. You cannot calculative their oh, half day that is uh, given in the Bhagavad Gita. Sahasya Juga Pajantam Marahajat Brahmanobhid. In the Brahma Loka, the duration of life is very, very long. It is beyond your arithmetical calculation. But even there is death. Therefore Krishna says, don't try to waste your time to elevate yourself or to transfer yourself from this planet to that planet. That is natural instinct. Uh, especially I see in your country, the people are so restless. They cannot stay in one place. Uh, sometimes they go from this place to that place, this apartment to that apartment, this country to that country, that country. That restlessness is there because we are uh, searching after the eternal happiness, and we are restless. We are trying to find out in one place, and when it is finished we try to go to another place, 
But I, if I change this place or that place, that is not eternal life. The eternal life is with Krishna. Therefore Krishna says, yadgatyāna nivartanti tadhāma paramangamam. Everything belongs to him, everything belongs to me. But he has got a super excellent place, which is called Goloka Vrinda. If you want to go there, then become Krishna conscious. That I have repeatedly explained in this meeting. Janma karma me divyam jo janati tata. Simply try to understand Krishna, how he appears, how he disappears, what is his constitutional position, what is my constitutional position, what is the relationship with Krishna, how to lead, everything. Simply if you understand these things, Krishna says, janma karma me divyam jujanati tattata. Tattata means reality scientifically, not by whims or sentiments or fanaticism, no. Everything, Krishna consciousness is everything scientific, solid scientific. It is not bogus, it is not imagination. So tattva, that is called tattva, in fact, in reality, in truth. If one understands Krishna in truth, then the result is, Tatta deham, by giving us this body, we have to give up this body, willingly or unwillingly. A day will come when you have to submit to the laws of nature and give up this body. Even your president, uh, Mr. Kennedy, he was going in procession, but when nature's law demanded that now you submit your body here and change, for another body. He had, uh, there was no question, oh, I am President, I am Mr. Kennedy, I cannot do this. Uh, no. You have to do it. Force, that we do not understand how this nature's force is working on us. So, this is the business of developed consciousness, human consciousness. Otherwise, consciousness is there in the dog, in the cats, in the worms, in the trees, in the birds, in the bees. Consciousness is there. But uh, are we meant for living in that consciousness, cats and dogs' consciousness? No. Therefore Bhagavad says that lambha sudhulamam idam bhusambhava. After many, many births, you have got this nice body, human form of body. And what to speak of American body, the nicest body, very beautiful body, uh, very rich body. Don't misuse, please. It lies. Develop Krishna consciousness and be happy. That is our propaganda. We are not asking anything that give me some fees and I give you some mantra. The mantra is being distributed free in the street. You simply take it, chant it, and just see how you are developing your Krishna consciousness. Oh. A inch development, advancement in Krishna consciousness, oh. It's a great profit that is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Salpam apriyasya dharmasya trayate mohatu bhayat. This consciousness, Krishna consciousness, if achieved in the slightest degree, it can help you for the highest benefit. For the highest benefit to take you to the spiritual kingdom, Vaikuntha Loka, Vrindavan. Uh, so don't be proud that I have got human body unnecessarily. 
Don't be proud that I can live very, very longer period than the cats and dogs. These things are very nicely discussed here. We shall uh, try to explain. Uh, the beginning is tarabo kingna jivanti, the beginning of this, how our consciousness is developed and important. Uh, that is uh, uh, stated in these pages. Uh, the tarabo kingna jivanti, you are proud of having a little long duration of life than the cats and dogs, therefore you are proud. Or oh, don't you see how long the trees also live? For seven thousand years, many thousands of years. So what is there in living for long duration of life? Uh, so well, there is no actual wonderful achievement by the so-called material advancement of life, unless you have got developed consciousness to the standard of Krishna consciousness. Everything is false. False means maybe temporary. You are American. You are feeling that you belong to the rich country, very beautiful body, no scarcity of food. That's all that. But it is also temporary. It is not permanent. The next life you do not know. Even if you have no uh, information, what is life after death? But there is. There is life after death. The body is changing. This is the instruction of Krishna consciousness. The body is changing, but the soul is eternal. We are busy with the bodily affairs of life, but we do not take care of the soul. That is the mistake of the present civilization. Krishna consciousness is teaching to the people in general, the philosophers, the religionists, uh, the leaders, that this is not the way of civilization. You try to develop your consciousness to the standard of Krishna, then your life will be successful. Thank you very much. Any question? Topics of Srimad Bhagavat uh, was due to Horikhit Maharaj being cursed by the Brahmin boy. So at the time of, your, of his death, uh, he wanted what to know from the great sages what, is his, what was his duty at the time of death. And uh, it was decided that he should hear Simad Bhagavatam from Sukhdev Goswami. That was the beginning of Simad Bhagavat teaching. Therefore, I was talking of Maharaj Parikit, little introduction. That is stated in our first canto of Simad Bhagavatam. You must read it. In the first part, it is stated what was the cause of uh, Srimad Bhagavatam teaching. The beginning was at the time of at the time of death of Maharaj Parikhi. So we should take the place of Maharaj Parikhi that he was given time seven days 
and he prepared himself by learning Srimad Bhagavatam for the next life. But we have no even notice when we shall die that we should always read Srimad Bhagavatam and prepare for the next life. That is the business of elevated consciousness. We should not waste our time by reading or by, uh, I would say, mixing our consciousness with so many rubbish things. We should try to purify it, chinita darpana mandanam. This chanting of Hare Krishna mantra will cleanse your consciousness, and if you hear Srimad Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, then it becomes Krishna conscious. That should be the duty of everyone. Describe that the Lord is the cause, the original cause. And since no one knows the Lord, how is it possible for people to know how they are controlled? How can they know how they are controlled? Since no one knows Krishna and He is the original cause, how can they know it is because of Krishna that things are happening? How can you know that you are controlled by this state? How can you know? Still has a problem. Yeah, but they are not. Krishna bhuli gela atahe Krishna bede purana karila. Because you have forgotten Krishna, therefore Krishna has given you so many books, Vedic literature. Therefore I was stressing, don't waste your time in reading nonsense literature. Just concentrate your mind in this Vedic literature. Then you will know why these books are there, just to remind you, to become lawful. But if you don't take advantage, then you are misusing your life. This preaching word, this publication of books, literature, magazines, the Krishna consciousness movement, everything is to remind you how we are being controlled, who is the supreme controller, how your life can be successful, how you can be relieved from this controlled life, how you can get freedom, life. This is the moment, this Krishna consciousness moment is for that purpose, otherwise what is the utility of this moment? It is not a, a, a ism, uh, just to make some uh, temporary appeasement. It is the ultimate solution of all the problems of life, this Krishna consciousness moment. And this chanting is a pavement of the heart where you will receive this message. Chita Dattvana Mahajanam cleansing the heart, then uh, you'll be able to receive the message. So our process is very scientific, authorized, and if anyone takes to it, you realize gradually and you'll be elevated. There's no doubt about it. Huh? What is the next engagement? Arctic. Okay. Oh,